Can we make wine from strawberry jam? So I've heard about making these preserves and jam type wines. And one of the big problems that people always say is, oh, there's too much pectin in there. It's going to be hazy forever. Well, I'm curious. Let's find out. So to do this, we're going to need some strawberry jam. Well, you can use any jam, but we're using strawberry today. Why? Because we like strawberry. That's why. And we're going to do it in a two gallon bucket because I want, I'm expecting a lot of sediment. So I want to be able to get a gallon of product because I think we're actually really going to like this one. So I want to have that. And we're going to be using white sugar. Basically everything we're using can be bought in the grocery store, except the yeast. I am going to use 71 Beast. It's Lalvin 71B, but this is just an awesome yeast. It is a 15% alcohol tolerance. So we're aiming for, you know, somewhere in that range, but about 20 points higher. And we'll get to that when we get there. So let's get started. Now, all these things that you see here have been sanitized in the red bucket of sanitization. And as that is a warm liquid that I have right down over here, we have set our jam containers in there in hopes that it'll make it easier to pour. Because jam is kind of, you know, thick. So we're hoping it'll pour kind of using the honey idea. You know, we warm up the honey first. I'm not really convinced it's going to work, but it's worth a shot, right? All right. So this is our strawberry jam. Pro preserves, actually, not jam. I got it from Amazon, figuring that way you guys can get it too. And it is actually Happy Belly Strawberry Preserves. It was the recommended one by Amazon. Got pretty decent reviews. People said it's more like Smucker's. So I went and checked the ingredients in Smucker's and I checked the ingredients in this and wow, they're the same. So <laughs> maybe it's made by Smucker's too. Anyway, um, the ingredients in this are strawberries, high fructose corn syrup, which is not one of my favorite ingredients, but it's going to ferment. Corn syrup, which why they needed both, I'll never understand. Sugar. Why not just use sugar in the whole thing? It makes no sense. Anyway, contains less than 1% of fruit pectin and citric acid. The citric acid is probably here just to maintain color and maybe a little bit of acidity, which is a good thing for doing this brew. The pectin, that's the one thing that a lot of people get concerned with because pectin creates that pectic haze, okay? A lot of people will add pectic enzymes and things like that. I don't want to use that. I want to see if we can do it totally without it. See how clear this will get. Okay, so this is a little bit of an experiment. As well as, I think it's going to taste really good. So let's uh, flip that bucket over and we're going to start dumping our preserves. Let's find out how this works. It smells just like the Smucker stuff. All right, here we go. Yeah, that ain't going to work. <laughs> I need a spoon. This might take a while. So we learned something. If you put these in the hot water ahead of time, the label starts to peel right off. And well, I didn't want it to get into the wine, so I removed it. So now I have a lovely sticky jar full of sticky stuff. So I'm kind of at the end here, but there's a lot of jelly in here still that I want. So I'm just filling it a little bit with water, put the lid back on. I'm going to shake the bejesus out of it and hope it all comes free. We're going to put water in this anyway. So oh, look at that. Look like a charm. Thanks to Derica for suggesting that because I was wondering what I was going to do. I probably could have done that a little gentler. <laughs> We need to oxygenate anyway, so... Yeah, but I don't need it to be all over the place. <laughs> By the way, yes, we have a new studio. We used to be over there. Now we're over here. If you're wondering why, it's because we got a new table. It replaced stuff. And I like the wood background. I know somebody's going to say they don't like it. I like it. One down. By the way, these are 30 ounce... Uh, containers, which is one pound, 14 ounces. So they're roughly two pounds a piece, a little bit less than two pounds a piece. And what I've heard and figured out is that it's about half of the weight of it is 
sugars. So that would make it like a 0.020 or so gravity per pound. We're going to measure it though, because there's just too many factors to figure out. You can't do this. Can you hold this? Story? I got this book. Like a Spider Man moment. <laughs> and that just might stay in. <laughs> it should. Alrighty. And on to number two. Again, well, this one pours a little bit. <laughs> you know, that top little bit that got warm. I actually love this stuff. <laughs> I'm not a big jelly person in general, but strawberry preserves. And it's funny because I'm not even a big strawberry person. Derek likes strawberries, but I think I like this more than she does. <laughs> it's like faux strawberry, even though it's, it is strawberries. I believe I need my spoon of unusual size, please. So what I want to do is just stir this up a bit and try to mix that in. It's very gloopy and very thick. I'm going to add more water. So right now I have about a gallon in here. Um, I might even add a little bit more just to uh, make more. And I'm stirring it to just get everything kind of dissolved because um, I, I kind of feel like it needs that. Wow, <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> Splash the top of my head. Now part of why I'm adding more water, not just to make more brew, is because I feel like this actually needs it. It's very thick and viscous, so I really want to end up with a gallon of finished wine. Therefore, I'm adding some extra water here. You can do that. All right, so we have like maybe a gallon and a half here now. It smells like strawberries, though. It really does. And sugar. Just very, very, very sweet. There are chunks in this, so I would expect this is going to take multiple rackings, but um, I think this might actually work. The reason people get nervous about these kind of brews is because of the pectins. Pectin can cause a haze, but people also will use pectolase because can extract a little bit more sugars from the fruits. So, put this on the scale. Now this scale goes to 50 pounds. And it's a good thing because this is 11 pounds, 14.8 ounces right now, and I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to it. Um, we don't actually know exactly how much yet. So let's find out how much sugar we have in here right now. And then we know how much sugar to add. <sighs> Time for math. Okay, so with just the preserves in there. Wow, that's pretty respectable. It's already at 1080, 1.080 gravity. So if I need this to come out to 15% with a little bit of sweetness, I actually need a 1.130 initial gravity. So to get that, if I'm at 1.080 and I need it to go up 50 points, I'm going to add a pound of sugar and probably just call it a day. Although, we did put in more, more than a gallon. So I'm going to use a pound and a half and call it a day. It'll be close enough. This is one of those doesn't have to be exact kind of things. I might even use like 1.4 pounds of sugar. That way, if we need to back sweeten a little bit, it's okay rather than overshooting it by too much and making this just sickly sweet. So now comes the fun part. Our bucket doesn't like to fit on this scale very well. I don't know if what I just did is gonna help or not. Probably not. Hey, it did. All right, so one pound of sugar. I'm just using plain white sugar. If you really wanna use brown sugar, go for it, but in this case, I think plain white sugar is probably sufficient. I could have used more preserves, except that I was afraid it was gonna be like thick, and that's just, you know, not a great way to ferment.
So an important takeaway from this is a lot of people ask all the time, what's, how much sugar did you put in in cups or this, that? That's not actually what's important. What's important to know is how much the ratios were. In other words, you can make this batch any size you want as long as you know that you, you dilute your preserves to a 1.080 gravity and then you add enough sugar to get to whatever gravity I'm about to get this to. And now we mix. General rule of thumb when mixing things like this. Mix it until you think you're done, then go another minute or two longer. A few pieces always seem to just fall out. In this case, it would throw off our gravity reading, which could throw off the amount of sugars that I think I have, which could throw off everything. So that's why it's good to know an idea of how much each thing should add. So I have an idea of where this should be. Not exact, but close. And I'm okay with that. I'm going to try to get much of the pieces of strawberry off the spoon as I can. There we go. And now we take another reading. The initial reading that we took was just to find out what the preserves themselves added to the party. And now we're looking to see uh, with the sugars how well I calculated or miscalculated our uh, gravity. Okay, first, the, the liquid is very viscous, so this may this might not be a truly accurate reading. That's why I'm going to bounce it around a few times and see what it comes up to. It's looking like 1.128. did say 1.130 was where I needed it, right? 1.128, it's off by two points from the high. It's fine! Okay, yeast. As I said, we're using Lalvin 71B, which I call Lalvin 71 Beast because it is. It's probably my favorite yeast right now. I just love this stuff. I'm going to use half a packet because my rule of thumb is up to three gallons, use half a pack. Over over three gallons, use a whole packet. At three gallons, use whatever the heck you want. So because it's going to be half, one and a half gallons roughly, I'm going to use half a packet. And I eyeball it. Don't get too crazy about it. It's not that critical. Adding two grams too much yeast is not going to ruin your brew, just as much as adding two grams too little won't ruin it either. Um, for those of you not using packets and aren't sure, this is five grams. So I'm recommending two and a half grams of yeast in this brew. If you use a different yeast when you do this, beware that you will get different results than I will, because you will have a different tolerance, a different flavor profile, everything will change. I chose this yeast on purpose to make this brew because this yeast produces fruity esters. Well, we're using strawberries, which aren't actually a fruit. They're technically a berry, aren't they? I believe There's so. something like that. There's some weird it's, thing. They're like from the, aliens or something. It's the seed. Situation. Yeah, they're like a seed or whatever. Somebody's going to tell me. If you, if you know what a strawberry really is, tell me in the comments below and I'll go through them and find out. Anyway, I like to do things like that because that way it brings out the fruitiness of that wine. I also just know that this yeast will chow through pretty much any. At this point, all I want to do is mix some of that yeast through. It's not really necessary. It just makes me feel better. Um, some people will say that you should hydrate your yeast. And you know what? They're right. I happen to know that our yeast is healthy and active. That's why I'm not that concerned about uh, just throwing it right in. We've been doing it this way for quite some time now, and it works out really, really well. Okay, now... I'm going to put the lid on. At this point, some people are going to freak out and say, look at how much headspace you have. It only goes to about here in the bucket. In primary, it doesn't matter. It's, it's really unimportant. So I have my lid on, except for this spot. Over here, and over here, over here. You. Helping you. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody knows what movie that's from, let me know. <laughs> So I'm going to put the airlock in. And if you don't have airlocks, just, just do yourself a favor and buy a few. They, they are not that expensive. And even if they are like 10 bucks in your country, a couple of them, honestly, it's just a good investment. They're um, reusable. Yes, they're completely reusable. There's no cap on this bucket to do anything with. You really can't put a balloon on this bucket. It just doesn't make sense. In case anyone is really, really wondering why I'm using a plastic bucket versus just putting in a fermenter, couple reasons. One, they're easier to swirl when there's large fruit caps. I expect this to have a fruit cap, so I'm going to swirl this up. There's a lot more area for a, it to break up. A fruit up. cap is when the particulates, in this case the strawberries, float to the top and make and a layer. Might. Thus, a fruit cap. And the gases can't escape. Things start to mold and rot and go bad, rather than ferment and go good, which is still kind of 
anyway, you get the idea. But it does that, and once all that sediment drops out, which I expect there to be a lot, I should still have about a gallon worth of product at the end that I can rack into a one gallon carboy for conditioning phase. So what's gonna happen with this now? It's gonna go sit probably over there because that's our new staging area for brews. Buckets don't really fit under my desk too well. And hopefully within the next 24 to 36 hours, it will start fermentation. And in a few days, we're gonna show you the result. All right, so here we are just two days later and you can clearly see that it's an active fermentation. It's bubbling pretty good, but you know what? Let's take a look inside that bucket, see what's going on. Okay, so looking in there, that is what's known as a fruit cap. So I definitely want to get that stirred up a little bit. So it's probably really good that we checked on this. Here we go. Just want to break that up a little bit because that could have been really bad. It could have blocked off. Look at all the gas coming out. So I'm going to try to just stir this up a bit, degas it some, break up that cap. I might have to do that every couple of days. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.